Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome to another video. Today we're going to be doing another leak code problem and it's going to revolve around linked lists. So if we take a look at the prompt here, we see that the problem here is called partition list. It is a leak code medium and it states given a linked list and a value X partition it such that all nodes less than X come before nodes greater than or equal to X. You should preserve the original relative order of the nodes in each of the two partitions. So if we look at the example they give us here, we see a list of 1, 4, 3, 2, 5, and 2, and x is 3. So that means that all the numbers that are less than 3 need to come before every number or any number that is greater than or equal to 3. So here we see that we have 1, 2, and 2. And these are all before any number that is equal to a 3 or greater than a 3. As we see here, we have 4, 3, and 5. And finally, they want us to preserve the original order. So here we have 1, then 2, then 2. And down here, we have 1, 2, and 2. And then for the numbers greater than or equal to 3, we have 4, then a 3, then a 5. And down here, we have that 4, 3, and a 5. So as always, the best way to first start solving this problem is to diagram it out and see how we can actually come up with the solution. And then we can dive into how the code looks like. All right, for this example, I'm going to use a list of four nodes. We're going to have a one, five, four, and then a two pointing to a null. So the way that we want to solve this is what I'm going to do is create two new lists. And I'm going to put all the numbers that are less than our x value in that list. And I'm going to put all the numbers that are greater than our x value in the other list. And then once we're done, we're going to connect those two lists together. And then that'll be our partition list. So to demonstrate how this looks, let's go through an example. So the first thing we want to do is have a pointer that iterates through our list. So let's go ahead and create that. And let's just call it P and it's pointing to whatever the head is pointing at. Now we want to create our two other lists. We'll go ahead and call these L1 and L2. All right, the first thing we want to do is we want to see if the value that our P is pointing to is greater than or less than the value of X. So let's just Put our x somewhere here just so we have it. So we'll say our x is equal to 3. Since 1 is less than 3, we want to have our first list point to that. Next, we want to go ahead and move our pointer. So now our pointer is pointing to the node with a value of 5. So 5 is greater than 3. So now we want our second list, our L2, to point to 5. Okay, let's go ahead and move our P. Okay, so now our P is pointing to four. Four is greater than three. So now we want the end of our L2 to point to four. So we want five, which is the end of L2, to point to four. It already is, but let me just go ahead and change the color here. Okay, so currently we have our L1, which is just pointing to this one. And then we have our L2 list, which is five pointing to four. All right, let's go ahead and move our P again. Okay, so our P is now pointing to two. Two is less than three. So we want the end of L1 to point to two. So we bring the pointer of one and we bring it all the way over to two. And then now we wanna go ahead and move our P again. All right, and now since our P is pointing to null, we're done with that iteration. And as we see here, we have two lists here. We have L1, that's a one and points to a two. We have L2, which is a five, and that points to a four. So we're almost done. One thing we wanna make sure we do is we set whatever's at the end of our L2 list to null, because right now it goes from five to four to two, which is wrong. We wanna just have this list on its own. So what we wanna do is we want to set the pointer of four to null. Okay, so at this point, all we need to do is merge the lists. So we want to set the end of L1 equal to the head of L2. So what we want to do is we want to change this pointer of 2 to point to 5. So now if we look, we have L1, which is a 1. This points to a 2, points to the 5, points to the 4, points to null. And at that point, we just return L1, and that is our partitioned list. So what are the time and space complexities here? 
Well, for the time, we had this pointer P that iterates through every node in the list. So our time complexity is going to be big O of n, where n is the size of the list. And for our space, we didn't use any additional space here, right? We just moved pointers around. And everything that we used is just constant space. So space will just be constant. All right, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and see what the code looks like. All right, so the first thing we need is going to be five pointer variables. So L1 and L2 are going to be referring to those two new lists that we're creating. And we also have these P1 and P2 variables to keep track of where the ends of those two lists are. We also have this P variable, which is going to start at the head. And that's just what we're using to iterate through our list. So we're just going to create a simple while loop to iterate through our list. So at this point, there are going to be two things that can happen. So either the p.val is going to be less than x, or in this else statement, it's going to be um, equal to or greater than x. So if p.val is less than x, then we want to set the end of L1, which is going to be P1, dot next equal to the current node that we're pointing to, which is P. Then we need to update the end of the list. So we need to do P1 equals P1 dot next. So now this is going to be pointing to the new end of the list. And likewise, we just need to do the same thing in this else statement, but with P2. And then finally down here, we need to remember to update our P pointer. Otherwise we're going to get an infinite loop. So if you're paying close attention, you'll notice that we have a error here or we're going to run into an error. So initially P1 is not going to be pointing to anything. So once we do P1 dot next, it's going to try and refer a node, but this is pointing to null. So we're going to get a, an exception there. So one way we can get around this is we can set dummy nodes initially at L1 and L2. So we can have something like L1 and P1 are both both pointing to this new list node. And it doesn't matter what value we put in here. Uh, we could just put a zero and we can do the same thing for L2. So now we just need to remember that we don't want to return these variables in our result. Uh, but now we won't run into this exception here. Cool, so finally we come down here and we see that we have three lines left. First, we need to set the end of L2 equal to null. So p2.next equals null. Because remember in that example that we were doing, uh, the end of p2 was still pointing to a node, but we don't want it to point to anything. Now we need to set the end of L1 equal to the beginning of L2. So what we could do is we could do p1.next equals, and we don't want to do L2, right? Because we have this dummy variable here. So we want to just do L2.next. Finally, we need to return our list, which is going to be whatever is at L1. So we're going to do return, not L1, right? But L1.next because of this extra node that we created, because we don't want that in our result set. So if we go ahead and run that, we see that the output matches the expected. And if we go ahead and submit that, we see that we get a success and we get a runtime of 100% and a memory usage of 100%. So an optimal solution there. All right, so that's gonna do it for this problem. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, please smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet, and I will see you guys next time.